Thank you very much indeed. And thanks to uh, Tina uh, for inviting me and to the WF of IP. And Lynn, if you're listening in, my very best wishes to you today. Uh, I can't speak enough for how highly uh, the members of the WF of IP have enhanced the European Association of Urology. And this conference is going to enhance it even further. And I congratulate Tina on highlighting an issue uh, that's clearly very important. So I was asked to speak about where the European Association of Urology sees itself. Uh, basically, the European Association of Urology is one of the biggest group associations of urology in the world. Even though it's European-based, it has many non-European members and links very closely with North America as well, and our, our sister association, American, American Urological Association. So the first question, I, I thought the title, uh, and I'm glad that Tina has already told me this is hard to define what sustainable continence care, because I couldn't, I struggled to actually define what sustainable continence care was. I will attempt to do that in my talk. And how we perceive it in the European Association of Urology and how we should achieve it. And this talk is really about how I hope that as part of this important discussion, European Association of Urology can assist the development of this initiative, which is, as I say, very important. Next slide. Uh, very simply, I'm in charge of the patient office. Uh, I have a background uh, in, I, I'm, a, I'm a pelvic oncologist, oncological surgeon, urologist, but of course I deal a lot with incontinence as a consequence, especially in survivors. Um, the one issue the patient wants to know is, sorry, there's two issues. First of all, they want to know they're going to be treated successfully. But the second thing is they want to know how to live with their disease. And in 2022, most patients are living with their diseases, disability. And surprisingly, as a small specialty, urological issues are a very potent cause of chronic disability, particularly urine incontinence. The American National Institute of Health projects it would be more prevalent than hypertension, and one of the biggest financial burdens on the American Treasury by 2050. It's a huge issue. And of course, it encompasses everything from intellectual disability to neurological disease to female urology. It's, it's multidisciplinary, chronic illness. But, uh, Sorry, next slide. So, going back to the question, how does the European Association of Urology uh, perceive sustainable continence care? Well, we perceive it as helping the patient to live with their disability while being aware of the impact of their condition on the environment. That's probably the best way I could describe it. But as you can see, while as urologists, we're very good at treating incontinence in hospitals, but most incontinence care is community-based in non-hospital environments. And, of course, we've lit or nothing written in urological literature. I would say nothing on the environmental impact of continence. So what do we need to do in the AU? We need to be educated by yourselves, during this meeting and by other stakeholders. And then we need to use our offices to educate because by educating, you empower the patient. And patient empowerment is going to be the most important issue in healthcare in the next few decades. The European Commission has commissioned two major reports on how health systems have to empower patients, which I won't go into for today. So how can the AU help with this? Well, the important elements of patient empowerment or patient partnership, as many definitions, communication, education, information, which is not quite the same as education, it's less formal, and advocating, advocacy. So the AU has structured itself uniquely among medical associations to try and come up with a formula that will empower the patients. And I chair this office. And it's largely structured around two uh, key uh, parameters. And informing the patient, we, we have a formal website on the, main, on the main website, 
that patients can access, a patient portal to inform patients on all aspects of urological care. And, and there, there is a group of urologists who come from all around Europe who are national ambassadors for their associations. We, 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 they, they set a lot of the agenda for this. But even more important is this group. Since 2019, we have a patient advocacy group. And the purpose of the patient advocacy group, these are patients and patient advocates who advise us what are the issues that, patient, that we need to be aware of. Their main purpose is to address areas of awareness, and that goes into EAU policy. But it's only been in existence since 2019, and of course COVID has had an impact. So what do we do? Well, our, the, we empower the patient, as I mentioned. We educate the patient. We have the edu information website. The website, which I'll show you, is, is in different European languages. It's absolutely gold standard. It's based on the best scientific evidence. The EAU guidelines are peer-reviewed, world-renowned standard for urological advice. And the information website, this is for patients, is based on, on the guidelines. We, we update it regularly, and we have different content. We use videos, etc., which I'll show you. But the main all importance of the website is we're now collaborating with urological societies in Ireland, Finland, Czech Republic, because at the very least, we're raising the issue about patient awareness and patient empowerment. And this is a very useful way of doing it. So the patient information is, as I say, it's basically, it's done in lay language, very simply. So there's no fancy scientific language. It's done, it's, 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 it's education is widely used by urologists to teach patients to make decisions. It's, it's got translation to different languages, including Chinese and Arabic. And as I said, the main, it's regular. It's very high profile for urologists. And just the fact that the urologists access it means that they are making better aware of patient uh, issues. So uh, quickly, what does it look like? Well, this is the portal. And you can see that you can access various diseases and get information, etc., etc. So I'm not sure if that's working. But we also have a social network, Twitter and Facebook, to follow as well. There are some of the newsletters that we use. Um, we've done market research recently, which is very interesting. Patients want short, sharp bullet points, not essays when they come to information. But clearly we can use this sort of format to inform the patient about sustainable continence care. We use animated videos. These are the most popular methods for patients. A picture paints a thousand words. And they're on different topics. One of these uh, has already made its way into German national television. And there, I'm proud to say we, we do deal with continents and we have high, there's our latest animations on the overactive bladder, which is there on the left hand side. But these are the, these are, well, animations are very popular and we translate them and we affiliate just to update you. We, we work, we have a major collaboration now with the Czech society and, uh, uh, and the Irish society, who are, and these societies are formally incorporating that portal into their own national websites. So the benefits are, we're, we're getting better, we're pictorially putting information out there, animations, and we need to put that out for sustainable continents. We're doing the clinical stuff, how to live with disease, but we need to raise this issue further, and we need to up our game, we need to update. And I'm here to listen and to learn. We use simple language, and we will inform our patients. So finally, the other important, equally important, if, more, if not more important, and this is evolving, is the patient advocacy group. These, this group will inform the EAU as to what issues matter to patients. And then it's a two-way two process. There's the current advocacy group. We're proud to have Lynn on it as a member. And she represents uh, non, there's a lot of oncology patient members, but Lynn, of course, is a very important member of, of the office. So what's the real role? Well, you see, having patient advocates gives the, us 
near you, the network. And then we can take that advice and put it out, out into the social media, out into the network. So this, obviously, is a very important strategy for communication. And just to show our commitment, we have a patient day, solely for patients at the annual meeting, where patients present their work. Not what doctors think patients should be talking about, but patients think should be talking about. And I'm proud to say the round table is a, is, and I would encourage you to attend in July, is on sustainable continence care. And I thank Lynn for bringing that to our attention. And finally, there is a sub office. I'm the chairman. There's our head of education. There's our head of policy who deals with DAU, Han Van Poppel. There's our sections. The, the patient advocacy group, this issue of sustainable commons care now has come to us. We need to integrate that into the EAU uh, offices of education, put it in the journals, put it into the guidelines, patient-specific guidelines, which we do, and policy, etc., etc. And as I say, I'm, I'm very thankful to be here in Finland, this beautiful country. Uh, I'm here to listen. So I look forward to interacting with you and to uh, hearing what the issues are, and hopefully the EAU is certainly here to do their part. Thank you.